Can you spray a cold away? Nasal sprays, made up of everything from saline to algae-derived sugars, have been explored for their ability to prevent or treat respiratory infections like COVID-19 or the common cold. But how and how well do they work? Welcome to Microbial Minutes, the American Society for Microbiology's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. I'm Madeline Barron, Science Communication Specialist at ASM. Before we dive into today's video, please take a moment to fill out the survey linked in the description. It only takes a few minutes and helps us make better videos. We appreciate your support. The nose is a primary entry point for respiratory viruses, including SARS-CoV-2, influenza, RSV, and cold viruses. The viruses attach to and infect cells lining our nasal passages, ultimately migrating down the throat and into the lungs. When someone is infected and sneezes or breathes, viruses are expelled and spread to others. The starring role for the nose during infection has prompted exploration into methods for targeting viruses in the nasal passages and stopping them in their tracks. This is the motivation behind intranasal vaccines. Intranasal vaccines mobilize immune cells in the nose and upper respiratory tract, which can limit viral replication, and ultimately the potential to shed viruses and spread them to others. Flu mist, an intranasal vaccine for flu that can be administered both by a healthcare professional and at home, is an example that is already being used. Researchers are working to develop other intranasal vaccines as well, including for COVID-19, and recent studies suggest the outlook is promising. In addition to vaccines, scientists have been studying the use of non-vaccine nasal sprays of diverse types and compositions as preventive tools against respiratory viruses. These sprays may contain saline, algae-derived sugars, nitric oxide, and more, and their purpose is to coat the nose with a substance that either entraps or neutralizes viruses to limit infection. But do they work? Before we dig into that question, I do want to note that some nasal sprays that claim to protect against infection are commercially available online and or internationally. However, there is no nasal spray explicitly for this purpose that is approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Some manufacturers have received warnings from federal agencies about overselling claims about their use, particularly for sprays marketed as being able to prevent or treat COVID-19. More research is ultimately needed for FDA approval to be sought and granted. Now, with that in mind, research in the form of large clinical trials is particularly useful. One such trial that included over 11,000 participants in the United Kingdom was recently published in the Lancet Respiratory Medicine. Trial participants included adults with at least one comorbidity or risk factor increasing their risk of adverse outcomes due to respiratory illness, like diabetes or asthma or, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, had at least three self-reported respiratory infections in a single year. The participants were randomly assigned to one of four groups. The first group received usual care, that is, advice about managing illness. The second was instructed to use a gel-based nasal spray at the first signs of infection, after potential exposure to infection, or after prolonged exposure to someone who was sick, spraying two spritzes up their nose up to six times per day. The third group received a saline spray with the same instructions, while the fourth was given access to a website promoting physical activity and stress management to see the effects of behavioral intervention on infection. And we won't dive into the behavioral aspect of the study here, but the paper is linked in the description if you'd like to take a deeper look. To determine the effects of each intervention, participants completed monthly surveys over six months, in which they self-reported the respiratory tract illness symptoms and duration. The results suggested that nasal sprays did make a difference, specifically in reducing the total number of days someone was sick over the six-month study period. People who used either nasal spray were sick for roughly two fewer days than those in the usual care group. In addition, the duration of illness in people who reported that they were sick was three days shorter in the nasal spray groups compared to the usual care group, and they had fewer moderately bad symptoms. The study authors note that nasal spray groups had a 20 to 30 percent reduction in lost days of work or normal activities compared to people who had usual infection care. They also mention that adherence to the interventions among trial participants was moderate and proposed the effect could be larger with better adherence, particularly in terms of assessing how well the sprays prevent infection. Now, while this is the largest study to explore the benefit of accessible, easily scalable interventions like nasal sprays that are used preventatively or early in respiratory illness, other smaller studies have found similar results. 
For example, a 2021 systematic review of several smaller clinical trials assessed the efficacy of iota carrageenan sprays in the treatment and prevention of the common cold. Iota carrageenan is derived from algae and creates a barrier in the nose to prevent viral entry into cells. Some, though not all of the trials included in the review, suggested carrageenan sprays could reduce the duration of common cold symptoms by 1.8 to 2.1 days. A recent randomized controlled trial presented at the 2024 European Respiratory Society Congress, though has yet to be published in a scientific journal, reported that children who developed colds and received hypertonic saline drops in their nose at least three times per day had symptoms that lasted two fewer days than those who received usual care. Other studies have suggested that drops made with azelastine, an antihistamine, or nitric oxide can reduce the load of SARS-CoV-2 in the nose of COVID-19 patients and or accelerate viral clearance. Now, generally, nasal sprays work one of two ways. They either kill the pathogen, as is the case with nitric oxide, for example, or coat the nose and block entry of the virus into the nasal lining. In a recent preclinical study, scientists opted to create a nasal spray that did both things to increase efficacy. The spray, called Pathogen Capture and Neutralizing Spray, or PCANS, consists of several polymers that are designed to coat the nasal passages and capture large respiratory droplets from the air, while preventing pathogen transport into the nasal lining and rapidly neutralizing viruses. In mice infected with a highly virulent mouse-adapted strain of influenza virus, a single pre-exposure dose of PCANS reduced viral titers in the lung by 99.99%, and ensured a 100% survival rate compared to 0% in the control group. Assessing the spray in a 3D model of the human nasal cavity suggested an increased capture of respiratory droplets, which harbor and spread viruses. Now, these data are encouraging. However, we would need additional studies, particularly those in humans, to understand how they translate to human infection. Of course, spraying anything up one's nose prompts the question to the safety of nasal sprays. Generally speaking, safety profiles for nasal sprays tend to be good, and in the human trials reviewed for this video, there were no severe side effects. Side effects tended to be mild and included nasal irritation or discomfort, sneezing, and headache. But, as always, more research is needed. The bottom line is that there is evidence to suggest nasal sprays may reduce illness duration, with new research developments in the field underway. Nevertheless, it helps to think of infection prevention as multifaceted. That is, keeping respiratory viruses and or severe infection at bay depends on a collection of practices like designing buildings to improve the flow of people and traffic and minimize pathogen transmission, disinfecting surfaces, getting vaccinated when vaccines are available, and improving air ventilation filtration in indoor spaces. Nasal sprays could ultimately represent another tool in the toolbox. That's all for today's Microbial Minutes. References for today's video are linked in the description. And if you liked this content, be sure to subscribe for more. As always, I want to thank you for listening. Thank Ray Ortega for production, and I'll talk to you next time.